Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to do now a bit of darkening and tidying up this picture simply by using curves and masks. But we're going to use four different types of masks just to show the different ways that you can do this. So first of all, I'm going to brighten this picture up, put on some curves. And if I pull this down here to darken it, because it's a bit too light actually. I'm looking at the sky in particular here. I can see there that if I come down to about there, then I got this side is, is better, but now it's a rather dark over here. If I pull down, by the way, this too much here, so this is hitting the bottom, a simple trick is to put a second point in and just lift it up so you've got, still got a smooth curve. But all the same, this side's okay, but this side isn't. So what I want to do is put a mask on this so that it applies it to one side and not to the other. And I can do that with the gradient. So I'm going to go down here, go to the mask, click on that. So the mask then is a, as a child of the curves. And then I'm going to go to the gradient tool here and paint on the mask with the mask selected, starting at this side. I've got, by the way, the snapping on here. So when it comes to the edge, it snaps nicely to the edge. I'm going to draw across here. And the way I'm doing that is with one side there is white and the other side there is black. I can change it up here as well by using the things within that. So there we go. So I've kept the darkness this that side. In the middle somewhere there's a little nick on that line, little blue line there. And I can sort of vary this across to however I want. So I'll bring it around to around about there. Right, the next thing I want to do, if I go back up to the curves there and just turn it off and just put another one on top. I want to correct this over here, but now I'm, I haven't got so much to do, but I want to match this to this over here. So I'm going to go to curves again. And just looking at this area here, I'm going to pull this down. But now I want to put a, a gradient on this. So what I'm going to do now is a fill layer mask. So I go to layer, a new fill layer. And I drag this down then onto the icon of that curves. And I need to open that up. So I'm just addressing this curve fill here. Now I need to draw a gradient on it. And so I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to draw kind of a gradient going across here. It's not having any effect to limit it. And that's because I'd start with white or in fact any colour and go to the other end. I want to make that one transparent. And the way I do this is there's opacity here and I pull this down. And now I can see here I can move this around the place. And I'm changing what's being darkened. So I'm going to pull that across the tree there. In fact, I bring this end down here. Bring that across a bit more. I think I need to make this a bit darker. So that it pulls in there. So I got that matching. So the sky is matching all the way across there. So why am I using this fill layer rather than an ordinary mask? It's because if I go back to the mask there, my gradient is now built in. I can alt click to see it, but I can't change it without actually repainting the entire gradient. Whereas if I go to the fill layer, now I can still move it. It still remembers where it is. So that's one reason to do that. So there we go, that's that one. Now a third method is I want to go kind of darken the, the round here to build this as a bit of a base. So I'm going to go to curves again. I'm going to darken this down so I so can see that's darkened that area here, but I just want it in that area. So to put a mask on here, another one is to do a gradient on a rectangle. So go to the top end there. And because I've got snappy on, it snaps nicely onto here. And this acts very much like the fill layer. So I drag that onto here. And I then need to draw a gradient from down here, coming up here. And again, this, the one side is white. And the other end here, it's remained from the, doing the fill layer. It's now the opacity is down on that. And here you can see there, I've got that. Let's have a look at the curves. Do I need to adjust this just a little bit more to get that 
nicely in the bottom there, so it's a darker base there. And the fourth method, I'm going to go to curves, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of warming. So I want to get this area here, this grass, to be a bit warm. So the way to do that, I go to red, and I pull that up here to make that a bit redder, and go to the blue, and pull it down, which makes it more yellow, because yellow is the opposite of blue. And see that's warmer in there. Now what I want to do is to use the built-in mask here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go layer and invert. And now I'm going to paint back on here, bring it back. So all I need to do is, because it's effectively inverted this, you can't see it there, but it'll appear when I start. It's made it black. So I go to the paintbrush here, make sure I've got white. Air yeah, opacity about 50% and a zero hardness. And now when I paint on here, I'm going to paint on here, you can see it coming back. So I'm making that warm there and see now the mask has appeared there and you can see that little bit is where I've been painting just to warm that grass up. So there we go, four different masks, four different ways of painting. This one by the way, uh, it's like the original mask in that once the, it's been put on here, even if I used a gradient I couldn't change it. But there's four different uses, four different masks and four different kind of like handy ways to do things. Personally, if I can do a quick change, I'll often use just, if I know what I'm doing, I'll use the built-in mask. For another method, I would use the fill or the rectangle. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.